Hello everyone. Well, we're all interested in keeping our brain healthy as we get older and there's all kinds of ways you can do this with, um, you know, with, with games and puzzles and strategy games, all these Sudoku. But there's one way I think that you can really boost your brain easily and that's reading. Now, Penelope Whiteley, one of our bloggers, I've met Penelope. She's really funny and very, very sweet lady, but she's been writing for us for years and she wrote this book on some things that you get from reading that give your brain a boost. And don't we all want that? <laughs> I mean, I've said this several times now in the last few months, that energy is the thing that really pulls us through our 60s and 70s, 80s. It's the thing that we have to you know, create a spark for. And our brain is the place where it all happens. Now, we've got to take care of it nutritionally. We've got to exercise and all those things. But, you know, let's sit down now and again and just read. And some of the things that Penelope talks about that you can benefit from, from reading, I think are absolutely true. So thank you, Penelope. And I'm going to read them out and we can chat and uh, decide which one of those or, or maybe all of them are uh, something you look for when you choose a book. So it's a passion for me. It's a passion for many of you. In fact, I think it was more of a passion, in fact, when I was younger, but I try now to read and I don't just read books. I read all kinds of you know, documentaries and reports and research and, you know, just stuff for doing these interviews for a start. But maybe you've got some special books that you like to read. So you'll get this. You'll understand why she says these things. Now, all the tech games we play online, it all they all contribute to boosting your brain. I'm, I'm not saying they're not. There's some very, very good ones. But um, books themselves, paper books or audio books or Kindles or however you read them. I used to say real books and then people were like, hmm. <laughs> So I just call them books now, and they're just the books that you read. Now, your brain is constantly decoding these words into complex sentences, and that's called reading. And your brain loves it. It just loves this challenge. So give it a chance to, to push your brain, boost your brain. Okay, so increasing complex is, is simplified by just saying simply, without a doubt, <laughs> reading reduces stress. Even as I'm sitting here, I realize I've got my legs crossed. I've got my, you know, it's just like there's so many things in our life that we actually do um, do na like naturally that are stressful, that are indicating stress. If I was reading a book, I would be relaxed. So stress is definitely one of the reasons to, to, to read. I mean, even doing a puzzle or when I'm doing coloring, and, you know, coloring for me is like a really, I like, I've got a kind of fidgety mind. I like, I like coloring. I love color. But um, in a way, I always find myself, not stressing a little bit, but it's like, you know, what's the next color to keep in the lines? I'm thoughtful, like it's a process. Whereas reading is more of a, just a relaxing thing. Of course, you can find books that aren't very relaxing and you're, they're going to be the ones that you keep on your edge of your seat. But anyway, more or less, it's good for your stress level. Next thing is it gives you improved social skills. I think in what Penelope meant by this was it increases empathy. You know, just our whole body is just uh, energized by reading and uh, we feel like we are understanding cultures and language and people. Um, I mean, I remember reading The Dragon, was it The Dragon Woman? Or it was those famous, famous ones years ago. And I just got to know this character so well. I felt like if I, I met her, we'd like be friends. I mean, she, she, in terms of being a strange character, but she was compelling. So you, it gives you an opportunity to read about other cultures, other people. You know, I just think it's really cool. So enhanced memory. Now, I this is why I like books, like real books in paper paperbacks or hardbacks. Because if I forget something, I can go back and have a look. Yes, I know you can scroll with Kindle and you can go back and forwards, but there's something about turning the page. I remember when I was reading um, The Gentleman in Moscow by M. R. Towles, one of my favorite books. Um, I just, I kept having to go back because some of the names were um, in Russian and they weren't easy to read. So memory, enhanced memory, makes you remember things. Remember a name, who was the character? What did they do? Where did they go? So it's good for the brain. Um, better uh, brain communication and function. Now, there actually is some proof to talk about this, which is, you know, you've got, we all know, we've got the left side and the right side of the brain and they work in different areas. Like there's the creative side, is that the right side? I always get these confused. And then the left side, which is, I think, the logical. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. They're different. They're the creative and the logical. But when you're reading, you connect them together. And it's just like brushing your teeth with your um, non-dominant hand. Your brain has to kind of switch around and it's exercise for the brain. It's like neurons are bouncing around, enjoying that kind of exercise of east, uh, north, oh, north and south both sides of your brain. Another thing it gives you is improved sleep. Now, I honestly have never read books to sleep because I always find that, um, well, that's not true. Audio books for sure I used to go to sleep, but um, you know, regular books, I would not use those to go to sleep, but sometimes it's better than 
being scrolling on your screen, um, you'll get, get a book out and just read it and then you'll probably just nod off with the book in your hands. So that's one thing that Penelope talks about is a good thing is to, uh, the, the reading gives your brain a chance to relax, less stress, good sleep. So that's one thing. Another thing that reading does, um, which I, I always agree with this, and it's why I miss the UK, is that um, you know when you're reading a lot in your own language, you actually do improve your vocabulary. And when I watch some bloggers and people that are British, I just am always in awe of their language usage. You know, the fact that they can use words that are like conundrum and, you know, in, indelible and you know, just words that you just don't get a chance to use those words much in your everyday life uh, unless you are in your country of origin. So that's one of my little things about living in Switzerland. But, um, but anyway, the point is it increases your memory and your vocabulary and you become a more rounded, you know, intelligent, but, you know, just intellectual. You can talk in different lang different tones and different words to say the same thing. Just, you know what I'm talking about. So that's the next thing. Um, the uh, large vocabulary, what else is there? Um, your vocabulary has grown, same with, oh, and then there's like more experiences to draw on. You know, you've got like life experiences of other people, other people that some author has made up and created for us. And so you learn about their life experience. And that gives you, just an, I think, again, increased empathy, kindness, even if the person's not real, like you can't see them, you see them in your mind and you see their personality developing. So it gives you a really nice chance to get to create you know, like new cultural um, perspectives. And I think that's really, really powerful. Um, just in general, greater life knowledge. I mean, if you like reading... Um, history fiction like I love historical fiction um you know I mean for example all of the books about Ella of Salisbury and um the med medieval time I just I'm totally fascinated by that I'm just reading a book called something about the um, horizon of, of medieval times and just fascinating so it teaches you about a time in history that you might not be aware of and by the way this isn't just for books um you can learn this on online like for example um the stoic philosophies that I'm very interested in. I'm not reading a book particularly. I think I've got Marcus Aurelius um, meditations, but I'm more, I watch blogs. I watch people online, you know, 10 minute chats. So maybe that's another way to just increase your historical perspective and not just historical, you're learning new stuff, like how to do things. It's an amazing world out there. Um, contributes to brain growth, I've said already. Um, emotions management, uh, Penelope talks about, and I really like that one too, because there's a, something about reading which you dive into the life of someone else, you dive into their situation, their emotions, their dilemmas, their, their complicated decisions, things they have to do. And I think it gives you like a depth of emotional connection that is really cool. Because if you don't have a lot of friends, you don't actually have a lot of people that, met, that represent, you know, like a different personality or a different um, uh, perspective on life. So I think that that's really a cool one. And she calls it emotional management. And I think that's a very, very cool way of looking at it. So uh, I think that what P Penelope's outlined here, I think she says it's 10 in her article. I think, is it 10 or I can't remember. Is it 10 or something? I think it's seven, 13 ways in her article. So check out the article. I'll put the link below and um, just tell me what you think about it. I mean, how has reading enriched your life? I mean, what do you do? What kind of books do you like to read? And what, how has it enriched your life in any of those areas? You know, stronger vocabulary, better cultural perspective, more knowledge about the world, character, um, interest, development. I think it'd be really fun to have a chat about this. I know you all like to read. Well, most of you, many of you. <laughs> Many of you probably don't, but um, if you are one of the people that loves books and likes to read, tell us how it boosts your brain. Why you read? Why do you read? What's the reason? To learn? To get engaged? To escape? What's your what's your your reason for, for picking up a book? This may be a better question even to have started this with. Uh, but I think it's a fun one, and I and I hope that we all keep reading. If you come to our Patreon supporters group, we actually often speak about books, and it's really lovely to see all, all the ideas that come out, all the suggestions. I just love it so much. But uh, that's one of our 60 and Me benefits. If you come and join us, there's real people out here, and they're they're willing to meet and talk, and it's fantastic. Have a wonderful day, everyone, wherever you are. Pick up a book and read it and tell me what you're reading. Let's have a conversation about books and how it boost, how they boost your brain, which is pretty important. <laughs> Take good care, everybody. Know that you're loved here and respected, and I think the world of you, I hope that you're doing okay. I know these are tough times. Hang in there. I know many of you are going through lots of things, and um, we're by your side. You're not alone at all. Okay. 
Lots of love. Take good care.